Hello, my name is John Duffy, and I'm pleased to be with you today to talk about strategic planning. I have worked with nonprofits on numerous strategic planning efforts, so I've seen the good and the bad. Also, I've worked in nonprofits in various positions as a volunteer, as paid staff, executive director, a board member, and board chairperson. I've also served as a consultant to nonprofits, so I understand the workings of nonprofits from direct experiences as well as from different perspectives. Today, we'll cover three main topics related to strategic planning. First, I will briefly describe what strategic planning is. Then I will describe the process used to prepare a strategic plan, and then end with the key steps for implementing a strategic plan. Yet before we begin, let's take a poll or two so I can get an understanding of the familiarity of you with strategic planning. It will help determine what areas should be emphasized. So let me bring up a poll. And so, how familiar are you with strategic planning? You could select. And it looks like we have most people are basically familiar with it. Okay. Now let's take another poll. This one, I would like to know, have you participated in a strategic planning process? Excellent. Most people have. That's fantastic. Now, the last question I have is, does your organization have a strategic plan? Mm -hmm. That's good news. Most people, most organizations have. That's great. Okay, so that uh, thank you for taking the poll. And let me begin by referring to a quote from Zig Ziglar that I have adapted, and it is, how can your organization achieve a goal that it does not even have? What this quote means is, many organizations have not set a specific goal. They're like rudderless ships, changing directions with the winds of the day. And each member of the organization has their own idea of what the organization is about and what it seeks to achieve. So the organization does not accomplish much of significance, or if it does, it does it by chance, because it lacks the ability to align and focus its resources. That's what strategic plans all about. Fundamentally, strategic planning is a management tool that combines strategy and planning. Strategy sets the direction of the organization through a deliberate process of reflection of future possibilities for the organization. In other words, what the organization seeks to achieve and how. Planning is about transforming these possibilities into realistic goals and sets a deliberate course of action for achieving them. Basically, strategic planning is a management tool that is used to identify ways of achieving positive outcomes. The strategic plan planning process identifies what must be done, when it must be done, how it should be done, as well as aligns 
all of the nonprofits, human and non-human resources that are available to achieve what it seeks to achieve. Strategic planning is about developing a set of actions that will improve overall organizational performance. It improves both daily and long-term performance of all organizational units. And that's why it's such a powerful tool. And one of the most important aspects of strategic planning, which is rarely talked about, is its ability to determine what is not important to the organization. This information allows the organization to focus on what will bring the highest level of achievement and keep it from being distracted by other issues. Saying no to initiatives that sound good, but are not identified as goals and objectives is critical if the organization is to accomplish its goals, because it cannot be all things to all people. Resources are limited and should only be used for those tasks that allow the organization to accomplish its mission. Now I wish to talk about the actual steps for creating a strategic plan. There are five basic steps for creating a plan, and once it's created, the plan should be implemented and not placed on the shelf to collect dust, as is the case with most plans. Now let's talk about each of these steps in detail. The first step consists of deciding to proceed. To do so requires the willingness and support of senior management and the board of direct directors to move forward with the planning process. These two groups need to be supportive and actively engaged in the planning process. In fact, the planning process requires all members of the organization and its stakeholders to be involved to some extent and to agree on the plan's critical elements. The agreement of senior management and the boards of directors is necessary in order to allocate resources to create the plan, devote the time and effort to the planning process, and importantly, to follow the plan once it's finished and adopted. The time required to create a strategic plan varies depending on the complexity of the issues. The plan could be developed in a week's time during an organizational retreat, or it might take a year-long process. A critical factor is the ability of personnel to commit to the effort. People will initially see the planning effort as just another task that needs to be done. For people balancing an already difficult workload, one more task is difficult to undertake and it's difficult to sell to people. So a clear analysis of everyone's work workload must be considered up front. And it means that senior management must understand that some work may need to be delayed in order to complete the planning process. Next, you determine the amount and form of stakeholder involvement. The organization's various stakeholders, its clients, its funders, the agencies that support it, should be involved in a process because they have unique perspectives about the organization. You may identify the groups who are your organization's stakeholders by asking what groups are directly affected by the organization, who might support or oppose the organization, and of course, includes your, include your funders as stakeholders. Involvement means collecting information about what the stakeholders support what they believe is important, what influence they may have and such. This information may be obtained through phone interviews, survey questions, or other techniques. Stakeholder involvement is crucial for determining what is important as well as to build external support for the plan. When I have done stakeholder analysis work, I have always been really surprised by the ideas and suggestions they have for improving performance and have also identified where the organization is failing. So this work is an opportunity to improve your nonprofit. Next, get agreement on priorities and goals of the organization. This step requires thoughtful discussion to determine about what is truly important to the organization 
in terms of its sustainability, its purpose, what it seeks to accomplish. Get an agreement on priorities and goals of the organizations is influenced by how complex the issues are. If the issues facing the organization are fairly straightforward, such as you know adjusting to some minor regulatory changes, then agreement may come very quickly. If, on the other hand, there are many issues and they're very complex, such as you know, the probable need for reorganizing the entire organization, or there's high turnover rates, or a major changing in the funding environment, then much more time will be required to arrive at agreement on the goals and priorities for turning those things around. And the amount and availability of resources and expertise to develop the plan should be considered. If many of the in-house personnel are familiar with speaking, then the planning process will proceed faster and more efficiently than the case where much upfront time must be devoted to informing everyone about the process. Again, if there's available resources and expertise in-house, then the organization may be able to take on a more comprehensive planning process. If not, then it should limit itself to one or two major issues and build confidence in, a comp in building and finalizing a strategic plan first. <clears throat> Once you have the agreement, <clears throat> excuse me, to proceed on the planning process and know what the key issues are, you then organize the process. The first step is to organize the planning team. Who's actually gonna do the work? Some of the key consider considerations will be, who will be on the planning team? Who will be the chairperson of the planning team? How will they get their other work done? When is the plan to be completed? From my experience, you want people who are known for getting their work done. They have good knowledge about the organization, and they also have good relations with throughout the organization. Part of, the or, part of organizing the planning process is to consider what issues are to be addressed. Will the plan address one or two important issues? Will the plan consider the entire organization's reason for being? Or will the plan address something in between? Determining the key issues to be addressed will determine the level of participation that is needed and the amount of time and resources that are required. It is best from my experience to focus on a limited number of key issues rather than attempting to do much do too much. Once you know the level of commitment and these issues that are going to be addressed, you can determine the basic planning process and the method. Here is where you determine if you can develop the plan using existing resources or if you need to hire a consultant. Some plans can be developed in-house very easily by using a retreat as a basis for completing the plan. I've seen strategic plans very well written, completed over a two-day retreat. Other plans, however, might require a few months of planning team work, while others might require a consultant to be hired. And these costs range from $20,000 to over $100,000, depending on the size of the organization, the issues to be addressed, the level of participation and such. Determine the approach is really based on the issues involved, your priorities, and the number of resources you're willing to dedicate to the effort. And some serious thought should be devoted to considering what is needed to make good decision. Often this means the ability to get people to focus on their part of the planning effort. From my experience, getting people to focus quality time and effort is really difficult, but it's needed to make good decisions. This is where 
oftentimes organizations will wrestle with, well, do we do the plan inside the existing building or do we go somewhere else to get people away from the phones? It's those types of decisions that have to be made. To get the level of focus you need often requires that senior management and the board make the plan a top priority. Senior management and the board must understand that the strategic planning effort does require time and effort, yet it will produce large benefits in terms of performance and outcomes. If you cannot get people to focus on the plan, then you should consider building stronger, a stronger level of support or limiting the number of issues to be addressed before you proceed. Once the planning team has been organized, the issues identified, the basic method to be used have all been determined. It is time for the organization, senior management, oops, I think I, oops, excuse me. Once resources are committed, the first task of the planning effort is to affirm the organization's mission, its vision, and values. The mission describes what the organization seeks to achieve, such as the protection of an endangered species or to evolve homelessness. Here's an example of a mission statement from the Nature Conservancy in Alaska. Note how concise it is and how to the point it is. People in this organization can quickly understand what the mission of the organization is about. An organization's vision describes what success means. And, is, and it is important from my point of view that the vision be described in terms of our senses, our senses of sight, our sense of sound, our sense of feeling. This is what solving the homelessness problem looks like for our community, for example. This is what it might sound like. For instance, people in the grocery stores talking about, wow, we really have, they must have really solved that homelessness problem because I don't see people living on the streets anymore. And here is an example of a vision statement, and it's also from the National Conservancy in Alaska. For me, it's a, a little bit too, too wordy, and it does not connect, to me at least, in terms of sight, sound, and feeling. It is good, though, in terms of outlining what is important to the organization. Yet, from my experience, shorter is better. Next, take a look at the, the values of the organization. And the values are the guiding principles of the organization in terms of how it will operate. It describes it's basically the organization's ethics. What, it's, what is okay to do and what not okay behavior is. Step four consists of developing a preliminary, preliminary plan. And the first effort is to complete an environmental scan. What trends are taking place that may affect the organization both internally and externally? For instance, are funding sources shifting to other concerns? Are employee turnover rates rising? Are client age groups changing? This information provides you with the data about how the organization may need to change in the future in order to remain, to remain viable and accomplish its mission. Another purpose of the environmental scan is to search for changes in the operating environment that may present future challenges and opportunities, such as a declining population of young adults and what that might mean for services that are targeting that age cohort. After the environmental scan, complete a SWOT analysis. 
A SWOT analysis reviews the strengths, weaknesses of the organization, as well as the potential opportunities and threats that may face the organization. Strengths include those things that your nonprofit does well, such as having low turnover rates or strong long-term funding commitments. After you consider the strengths, consider its weaknesses. These are things that need attention in order for the nonprofit to become truly effective and efficient in its work. Lack of internal expertise might be an example of a weakness. Poor program performance might be a weakness. Next, look for opportunities that may exist for your nonprofit, such as new funding sources, the ability to combine efforts with other well-connected organizations, or the chance to implement a very innovative uh, program. Then, identify threats. And threats might be uh, declining funding or changing priorities of funders. Like the environmental scan, the SWOT analysis will identify areas where the organization should focus its energies in order to become stronger. The SWOT analysis should be used to identify the work that the nonprofit should focus on, while the strategic plan should describe the specific goals and, our, and objectives to correct any weaknesses, guard against threats, and to take advantage of the strengths and opportunities of the organization. After finalizing the SWOT analysis, it is important to consider what must, must be done as well as what resources are needed to address threats and weaknesses or to take advantage advantage of strengths and opportunities. This is done, be done by developing a model of the strategy to achieve the intended result. In other words, the theory of change. A theory of change considers what the organization needs to address, what it needs, and how it will achieve the outcome that it desires. When working on a theory of change, I have always found it easier to, to work backwards. So I first describe the outcome I wish to achieve, and then I describe, describe how I will achieve the outcome, identify what is needed to achieve the outcome, you know, what kind of inputs and activities. When working on the theory of change, it is important to use the information you have obtained in both the SWOT and environmental scan analysis, as well as the information you obtained from the stakeholders to determine the likely changes you will, like, you will face and how you might overcome these challenges. Now let's work through an example using a goal of improving the quality of education. So the first thing you do is identify the inputs that are available for the program or the project. And these are typically funds or the personnel needed to complete the work. Next, identify the actual tasks or the activities that the funding and personnel need to complete. For our example, it is the purchase of textbooks and educational equipment, as well as the training of teachers. So my funding and my personnel will do or will uh, purchase textbooks with the funding, they'll purchase equipment with the funding, and my personnel will help train the teachers. Then identify what outputs will be accomplished from these inputs and activities. In our example, this is having teachers with adequate skill levels and students who have their requisite learning materials. That is what is going to happen from these inputs and activities. With these outputs, then describe the outcomes your program is to achieve. In other words, what are the goals of the program? 
In this example, the goals or outcomes are students who have obtained basic education as well as achieving a lower dropout rate among the students. Those are my goals, to be able to ensure that the students have a basic level of education. Lastly, describe what will happen if your nonprofit achieves its program goals. In this example, it is students who have the basic skill sets to obtain employment. So the theory of change is basically an action plan for accomplishing your nonprofit's goals. It lays it all out. The next step in the planning process is to analyze your nonprofit's capacity and finances. Does it have enough people to accomplish its work? If not, what will it do to bring the workload and staffing into alignment? And is there sufficient funding? Well, in most cases, everyone says, no, there isn't sufficient funding. So if not, what needs to be done to bring the level of, of funding into alignment with what your nonprofit seeks to achieve? Or maybe the nonprofit is attempting to do too much and needs to be, need to, you need to take a critical look of what really is possible. Finally, consider your nonprofit's level of expertise. What is the workforce good at? Are there any initiatives that are well suited to the present level of experience and knowledge? And how are the relationships of the nonprofit, your nonprofit, with other nonprofits? Are there opportunities to work together? How are the relationship between senior management and the board? Are they good? or are they in disarray? And what about the relationships between the staff and the senior management? An analysis of the level of expertise and these relationships can identify serious, serious challenges for the nonprofit in areas that need to be worked on. Once these critical tasks are completed, you then need to finalize decisions which requires agreement on the course of action or actions that will be taken on the various key issues addressed in the plan. This is the final stage of ensuring agreement on the issues. You shouldn't allow for a complete rehashing. However, if there's strong disagreement, it has to be addressed in order to ensure success of the planning effort. The planning document should clearly articulate the agreed upon mission, vision, and value statements. And these statements should be used as standards to guide the organization's decision making. For instance, is this new practice in alignment with our values? Does this new initiative help us to achieve our mission? These are the sort of questions that should be used to keep the organization on track. Next, describe the goals, objectives, the schedule for achievement, and the responsible parties for achieving the goals and objectives. These are needed in order to identify what the organization will work on, what part of the organization is responsible for that work, and will also be used to monitor success or the need to revise an approach. Finally, determine a timeline for revisiting or revising the plan. Typical revision times are three to five years. Even though the plan may be revised at any time in order to address major changes that will or have taken place. Once all these decisions are made, write down the entire document. This is a way for everyone to see what was agreed upon. Also, it will be used for future decision-making and budget development. So it is important to write down the agreements because people's thoughts and memories have a tendency to change over time and based on the issue at hand.
So it's critical to have these things memorialized, if you will, in a single document. Now, put the plan into action. It is critical that the plan be monitored so that progress on goal achievement can be assessed and actions taken to ensure success. Typical plans are monitored by management and or the board on a quarterly basis or maybe three times a year. And these um, reviews typically take place at a regular board meeting. And in my experience, um, if things are going well, this review may take only about 10 to 15 minutes. If things are not going well, then it might take a little bit longer, but that's okay because there's an issue that needs to be addressed. And so quality time from senior management and board of directors should be invested in solving the issue. The plan should also be used as a guide during the annual budget process to ensure that programs that are needed to achieve goals receive adequate resources, but also, and importantly, to help restrict funding going to good ideas that are not priorities, because these things will cause the organization to become distracted from achieving its agreed upon goals and objectives. Similarly, the strategic plan should be used to develop the annual work plans of the organization. What actions are to be taken over the upcoming year to achieve our goals? What actions will be needed to achieve our goal of 15% increase in donor con contributions, for instance? And importantly, the plan can be used as a way of saying no to initiatives that will distract the organization from achieving its goal. Let's face it, there's lots of things we would all like to see done. However, we must recognize that there's only 24 hours in a day, we cannot do everything, and there's limited resources. One of the more important things of a strategic plan is that it helps us stay on track by identifying what's truly important for the organization and provides us with the path for achieving our goals. So thank you for taking the time to listen. And I hope some of this has been informative to you. And I think we do have some time for questions. So I'm gonna go to the question box here and see what we have. Yikes, there's lots of questions. Just a quick reminder so that people can type in their questions. They, there, there is still time, so make sure to click on the orange arrow key on the left side corner of your screen. That will expand the control panel and you will see the questions box there. I guess the questions that are there are from people who are having issues with their sound. So we can, we can give them just a couple minutes just to see if they want to type in something. In the meantime, I um, just want to go over a little thing that I wanted to mention before the webinar ends. This is the first time ever that we have done this webinar, so your comments and your feedback are very, very valuable. If you please um, stay after the webinar ends, you will see that a survey pops up. It'll take you 60 seconds to complete. It's completely anonymous, but your comments will help us improve our content, so we appreciate uh, you taking the time to do so. So we have a question regarding how can you get team members to meet deadlines for a strategic plan? And one of the, one of the ways that I have used is upfront when you're selecting members to participate on a strategic plan is to describe to them right up front that here's the timing that we envision for this project it's going to take six months that will require you to be very timely in what the task you need to accomplish and so one of the ways to get members to meet their deadlines is to have them commit up front 
to getting the task done. Other, some, some folks have used um, actual little contracts, um, like a volunteer contract, a one pager that basically says, I commit to completing my work on time. Yeah, that's another technique that you might, might use. There's a question here about uh, the use in saying no. Saying no to new initiatives and new ideas is really very difficult. We all want to help people. We all want to um, uh, help folks accomplish what they, what they desire. However, we, we have to recognize we can't do everything. And it's better to do a few things extremely well than to do a lot of things very poorly. And so the strategic plan can be used basically as a, a guide or a standard. So when someone comes in with an initiative that you know does not fit, you can point to the strategic plan and you can say, well, it, it's not here. Our nonprofit has identified these goals. And so this is new one. And so once we accomplish these new goals or the goals that we've adopted, then we will consider yours. Uh, there's a question here about a board of directors that is working on a high level strategic plan while in the midst of a CEO hire. And the comment is staff is hesitant to move forward without new leadership in place. And I would agree with that. The, what you'd really want to have happen is to have the new CEO on board before you initiate the strategic planning effort. You need to have that person's input, their, uh, their vision, their style of work involved in it. In fact, I would say that you shouldn't even start a strategic plan until the CEO has been in place for at least six months so that they understand how the organization works. Now, how do you convince the board of directors to do that? is another you know another issue it's got to be done very um, politely they're very politically and i suspect that the best way of trying to convince them is to suggest that you or the organization really wants to have a, a successful strategic planning effort and the best way to do that is to ensure that the ceo is part of the process that the CEO has ownership, understands why the reasoning behind the um, agreed upon goals and objectives. That might be the way to get around that. Let's see. So there's a question about timing on suggested time period for a strategic plan. How long should it last? Uh, <clears throat> I think three to five years is a, is a typical um, time frame. More than, if it's less than three years, then you're spending a lot of time and effort working on plans instead of accomplishing your work. If it's more than five years, then things are changing in the environment, the operational environment um, too fast. And the organization isn't, may not be nimble enough to adjust to the changes. So I think um, a three to five year time frame or outlook for a strategic plan is, is actually best. Two years, one year is I think too, too short. How does it work when you have a very little organization, like three or four staff members? Frank, I've worked with a, a working on a strategic plan with just, I think our organization had, it was five or six, basically the board of directors and a, and a staff member or so. Well, I think it's very, very important to, to have a strategic plan for both very small organizations and, and very large. And it all goes back to there's limited resources out there, limited time, 
and effort. And so you want to make sure that just you're spending quality time. For a very small organization, maybe you just want to come up with three, two or three goals and get agreement on that, and then to develop the action plan for, for getting those things accomplished. Okay, John, I think we're uh, we're just about to close. Do you want to answer a couple more questions or we're, do you think we're ready to go? Oh, I can ask. Let me uh, answer two more. Okay, perfect. There's a question here about is there a fixed date uh, for when a strategic plan has to be finished and ready to run? And the, the short answer is no. It's, um, and I have to, you know, I have to go back to, it's an operational definition. When you see it, you know it. You need to have basic agreement among those in the organization on the goals and objectives and the resources. And this takes time, it takes effort. If the issues are straightforward, you'll get agreement fairly quickly. If not, then you need to discuss them and hammer out agreements. And so it really depends on what the uh, planning effort is working on. Similarly, there is a question about the time of the year. And I don't think there is a, a good or bad time of the year. I would, uh, if possible, take a look at what the organization does over the entire year and select the time when the organization is less busy, if you will, to start the strategic planning effort. So those are the two questions. I can go more if you'd like, Marcel. Um, it totally depends up to you. If you want to stay longer, we can stay. And people who need to log out, just know that the recording will be available in your charity how to library by tomorrow morning. So feel free to jump off if you want or stay as long as um, John wants to stay answering questions. I'll stay answering questions and for another 10 minutes. Perfect. Okay. Wonderful. Okay, here's a question. Can you expand on ways to get board members to research and prepare for planning meeting? It's difficult to motivate people to read emails and materials. Oh, man, I think if I could answer that one, um, I'd be making a lot of money. I think what has to happen here is, and, and for board members, it's really the job of the chairperson. And so if you have board members that are coming unprepared to planning meetings, then someone, and this is probably the CEO, needs to talk to the chairperson and tell the chairperson, hey, look, um, the board members are showing, you know, some board members are showing up without adequate preparation. And that is causing this, this planning effort to take longer or, or causing conflict within the group. And so could you, chairperson, talk to the board member and you know, encourage them to become more prepared for these meetings? This really depends on relationships. If you've got good relationships going on between the board, members themselves, between the board and senior management, then these conversations can be, you know, can happen and can resolve the matter. If, there, if there's conflict going on, and this is actually kind of a, 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 very, a barometer, if you see a lot of this going on, then there might be some conflict. And so it might be, um, oh an indicator of something larger going on but once again in order to get the board members to be prepared requires the chairperson to talk to them and a way of getting the chairperson to do that is to get the ceo of the organization or someone who's 
has a trusted relationship with the chairperson to talk to them about the issue. There's a question here about how many people or viewpoints may be needed to make a successful strategic plan. Um, I'm not so sure you need a specific number of um, different viewpoints. However, you do need the atmosphere or the environment that allows for different viewpoints to be expressed. And if everyone is just all saying or going along with things, then someone needs to be playing the devil's advocate. Someone needs to say, well, what happens if? Or shouldn't we be doing that? Someone needs to bring that stuff up, those things up, in order to make sure that everyone is considering um, all of the possible um, choices that are available, the possible opportunities, and the possible threats. If you have people, if you don't have good discussion going on, it's a problem. And so some, someone, whoever's leading the effort, or the chairperson of the board, or the CEO, or wh whatever, whatever leader you have in your organization, needs to step up and begin to um, ask questions. Um, to describe alternate points of view so that everyone feels free to talk about it. So here's a question about, do you have suggestions for gathering input from the community, from the patrons, from um, city, county leaders prior to creating or updating a strategic plan. One thing that you might do is um, just interview folks. And these can be, they, they don't need to be formal interviews. They can be informal interviews. Oh, meeting them at the grocery store and talking through some issues having lunch and talking through some issues. This might provide you with some um, important basic information on, oh, this strategic plan is going to be difficult. This strategic plan needs to address one or two issues. These are the issues that I think we need to invest more time and effort in thinking about prior to updating our strategic plan. So you can do this on an informal basis, which can lead to a more formal um, analysis and collection of data, a more formal interview process. Um, maybe some short uh, email questionnaires can go out. Oh, here's a great, they're all great questions. Here's another interesting question. What if we can't fulfill our goals and strategy? Should we plan only things that we are sure to be able to accomplish? Well, if you can't fulfill your goals, then you really need to take a look at why. Ask the question, why? What is going on? Do we lack resources? Are they the wrong goals? Is it our expertise? Is it a changing um, in operational environment? Really, if you're not able to fulfill your goals, I mean, that's a, it's a major problem. So you need to spend some quality time and effort to understand why. And that is the value of monitoring. Monitoring your progress will provide you with some indication of, are you making progress? And if you're not making progress, why not? Also, 
if you have made progress, it's good to understand why. What did we do to be successful so that you can repeat that? And in regards to planning only things that you're sure to accomplish, I say no to that. You should, you should really take a look at your mission statement. What, what is it about the organization? What, what are you trying to achieve? What's your vision? And I didn't say this before, but I believe in having big goals, goals that make the organization stretch. Even if you're a very small organization, three or four or five people, you still can have big goals. And build big goals will cause you to, um, they, they actually help build morale because you're going to, frankly, change the world. And that gets people excited and that gets people dedicated. So it's very important, I think, not only to have important goals, goals that align with your mission and vision statement, but also goals that make the organization stretch so that they, the organization learns and becomes more productive. Yeah, there's a question here about um, basically a dysfunctional board. And is it realistic to do a successful strategic plan when chaos reigns in the background? Well, it's the chaos that's reigning in the background is a limiting factor for the nonprofit to achieve its goals. So what what the strategic plan might do is provide the opportunity to address this chaos by first identifying, ooh, we have some relationship problems going on. We have some preparation problems going on. And that is keeping us from being a more effective and efficient organization. So let's talk about that. It might provide a neutral way of addressing a a volatile issue and I do believe you have to have these good um, board relationship they're intra and intra and inter board relationships so the board amongst themselves needs to be able to work together and the board and the senior management and all of the personnel in the nonprofit have to be able to work together and a strategic plan will provide the opportunity to address dysfunctional um, relationships. And I think it can do that in a neutral way because it provides the opportunity to ask, well, why aren't we doing this as well as we should? What's, what's holding us back? And then pretty soon in the conversations, it's going to come up that it's the dysfunction that's occurring. And then the next question could be answered. Well, what's causing the dysfunction and how may we get rid of it? Well, it looks like we've entered our time. I thank you again for these wonderful questions and for taking the time to um, be with us to walk through the strategic planning process. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thanks everyone for joining us today. Please stay safe and healthy and we hope to see you soon again on another charity how-to webinar. Goodbye.